Hi, Chris Wallace from Second Swing. We're in Carlsbad, California today at Callaway headquarters. I'm with Steven. We're down in Callaway's Performance Center. Been hitting some brand new Callaway clubs. Just finished up hitting the new Rogue Driver. Uh, Epic was obviously huge for you guys in 2017. Mm -hmm. I think Rogue's gonna be really good in 2018 for you as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, like we had mentioned earlier, we talked about the, the various technologies, the face, jailbreak technology, the carbon composite crown, the higher MOI. Uh, with all those things combined, it sounds like, and it looked like you're hitting pretty good. Yeah, you know, I really liked it. Uh, I played an Epic Sub-Zero for the majority of the 2017 season, mm -hmm. so I was sort of focused on the Rogue Sub-Zero. Right. Uh, for me, as a sort of lower launch player with the heavier weight in the back, that's the setting that works best for me. Mm -hmm. But I really came away impressed, first of all, you know, the footprint, as you mentioned, is a little bit larger to improve MOI. And I could feel and saw better results on some of the shots I hit a little bit from the heel, or for me, usually kind of the toe if I missed. Mm -hmm. But the club doesn't look big. It doesn't look oversized. It, it's got a great shape. It, it inspires confidence that you got some room to play with, but it's still really sleek and it looks really fast. I love the, the way the carbon blends in uh, with the black crown. And you've got the, you know, the aerodynamic technology on the crown here, but with the color scheme, it's not distracting at all. Yeah, for that sub-zero head shape, it's, uh, to your point, very clean, very playable. And you would think that with more MOI, there'd be maybe an increase in spin. Uh, you know, for a better player, you don't necessarily want an increase in spin. But from the numbers that we had seen and the ball that you had had, I mean, it was, Pretty solid, but you just happen to have extra forgiveness. Yeah, the performance was fantastic. Like you said, I got numbers I was happy with, but also like did not see the sort of off-center shots when my strike wasn't as perfect, and we used some face tape to make sure to see where I was hitting the ball. The other thing I want to point out that, that really stood out to me was the sound. Mm -hmm. uh, the epic. I like the sound of the Epic, you know, it was a little duller, the Epic Sub-Zero. Uh, some people weren't as crazy about it, they felt they maybe sort of like they like a little bit louder sound. I think this is like the perfect happy medium. It's a little bit more explosive sounding than the Epic, but not tingy. It doesn't have sort of that loud pitch, like painful sound. It just really feels powerful. Yeah, and the, the cool thing is that even the miss hits all the, the sound overall is very consistent. It's not like you have one off the heel or the toe or high or low and it's like a higher pitch or a lower pitch. It's pretty even across the board. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, I, you know, my miss hits, both in terms of performance and what I heard and felt, weren't, you, d you didn't really pick up on it. Most of the evidence that my strike was a little bit off was just from the tape on the face. Right. So. Um, and of course for me, you know, I think the Sub-Zero would be the one I would fit into best again. Mm -hmm. uh, but the standard Epic, outstanding. My colleague from Second Swing, Kellen, was just crushing that thing. <laughs> he was. And then there's also going to be the new draw bias, which I think is going to be a great option for that golfer that struggles to sort of get the club face square. So I think between the three models, the upgrades and the technology, a little bit more forgiving and then just what, again, just a super sleek, fast look. You got a, you got a home run on your hand. Good stuff. We appreciate it. Thanks, cool. Steven. Thanks, Chris.